Yes, it is a beautiful day in sunny Florida. Got the top down, windows rolled down, and I'm trying to get something working with the Z3. Again, this is my life. In review, we have a fresh battery, nice and charged, gone through, and hopefully, if my Googling was correct, disabled the EWS in the DME, which is the anti-theft immobilizer system. And, well, really, that's all I've had time to try. Still not working. But, I have my handy-dandy, old-school, bypass-everything switch. And, if I clutch in... Oh, yeah! So, at the very least, it turns over. See, what concerns me, like may concern you, is that these BMWs, the electrical nightmares that they are, may require a perfect and absolute connection to all systems before wanting to start. I wouldn't know if that was the case. So, anyhow, as I was saying before I so rudely distracted myself, as I have demonstrated, the trigger makes the engine go. And if it was something simple like the starter relay, bypassing that relay with the switch would hopefully, theoretically, let the car start anyway. The next two things that I will be doing is testing the fuel pressure and the spark plugs. So, son of a b I wasn't even recording. How did that happen? All right, so do it again. So we are once again for the second time going back to basics. I have removed all of the plastic niceties from the engine and we're going to go ahead and test again the fuel delivery system. Now this is the fuel rail and this is the electrical conduit that all of the wires run down. And if you look down here with those pink tops, those are the fuel injectors, the solenoids. The electrical comes through here and makes it pulse. And if the fuel is under pressure, it will shoot into the intake manifold and into the cylinders, mix with the air, under compression, engage with a spark. You have your combustion inside the engine, hence internal combustion engine. So, engines need three things that I just mentioned. You have air, fuel, spark. We know obviously it's getting air and compression because the engine is turning. You have two tests, two ways to test fuel delivery depending on the answer that you need. If the answer that you need is yes or no, you come down to this little Schrader valve here, just like the Schrader valve on a tire or on the... There it is. Haha! -ha. Air conditioning system. Yeah, I'm still not that familiar with this car yet. Anyhow, so most fuel rails will have a Schrader valve either in the front or in the back, depending on how <laughs> sadistic the designers were. And uh, if you just need to know whether or not you have fuel going to the fuel rail, you poke the valve inside. And the only reason that I'm getting so close to this is because I know the answer. But you poke that little valve and see if anything squirts out. In our case, it does not. The yes, no answer is no. However, for the sake of thoroughness, for the sake of, in case you, in case the answer that you need is how much, you hook yourself up a fuel pressure gauge to that Schrader valve. Go back to the car. Take the hand off. Yeah, 
It was already on. Spoilers! You already know it's not going to work. Cut out on me. All right. So, turn the key on. I may be running out of space on the phone. Anyhow, so, take the key, put it in the keyhole, you turn. The pump should at least prime. It should at least turn on for a couple of seconds to put a little bit of pressure in for when it starts. It is not. Another thing that you can do is we can turn it into run or start. Still no pressure. And if we switch hands and grab the magic car starting trigger. Nada. So now, now what do we do? Well, we know that our problem is isolated to the fuel delivery system, which consists of, from tail to tip, the fuel tank, the fuel pump, the fuel filter, the fuel lines, the fuel injectors, the fuel rail, and the electronics that control the whole lot. Well, we know it's probably not an issue with the fuel injectors because we're not getting that far. The fuel pump needs to put the pressure into the fuel system before it will fire. In an older car, in the ones that I am more comfortable with, we will have... Ha! Fuel pump. So, we know that we have fuses 1 through 10. We have fuses 11 through 20, based on that diagram here. We're looking for 13 and 18. So we go 11, 12, 13. Looks good to me. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is blank. 18. Number 18. That is fine as well. So the question is, how much more can I do with one hand? Oh, look, the sun's coming out. Which, by the way, right now it is February 5th, dead of winter, and a frigid 18 degrees Celsius, which is like 65 freedom units. Oh, I really need to dig out my... <laughs> So, shock towers are usually a pretty good ground. Ta-da! Now I can go poking around in the shock box. And see what's what. First sing. So I peeled the little, you know, plastic top out of this one. She's a little 5 amp fuse. Not going to hurt me too bad. Anyhow, I'm just kind of poking inside here. 13.5 volts, 13.5 volts, we're good on both sides. And we'll go back over to the 13 point something, 13 point something. So both circuits for the fuel pump have voltage. The next thing that I would test would be the relays, which I absolutely cannot do with one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you down again what I have here is the relay for the fuel pump. Relays are just electronically act actuated switches. If you put 12 volts across the magnetic coil, yeah, it uses that magnetism to pull the switch over and it will allow connection between these two spades. As you can hear, yeah. Works just fine. So, we know that the relay works, which means it's either the fuel pump or that relay is not getting the signal to turn on. In conjunction with the fact that the starter is not allowing the engine to turn from the key, I am going to presume that the immobilization system is fighting us on this one. I'm going to unhook the batteries. I'm going to lock the car because one way that this immobilizer works is that it detects whether or not you used a key to unlock the car. And
Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work either. As you can tell, it is a lot later in the day than it was earlier. Yeah, I have been at this intermittently in between sandwiches all day. But I think I figured out where I went wrong, and I feel so freaking stupid. I do. I feel so freaking stupid. So when I was tinkering with the computer, I put the ones and the zeros in the wrong order. Turns out stuff like that matters. So the coolest things happen when you guys aren't here. So in tinkering with my other problems, I may have created another problem, but Oh shit, hang on. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I didn't get its first start on video. This is so disappointing, but so exciting. It, it runs. Ah, I am just too excited for words right now. Oh my god. Mm -hmm.